Hi everybody, welcome to Muse and uh, Sound and Vision. I'm your host Michael Sandoval and we're here with Ryan Carnes from La Bola de Valentina. Si. Uh, translated into English, that means Valentina's wedding. Exactly. So, tell us a little bit about your role in the film and how did it all come about? Uh, it came about in, in a similar way that a lot of projects come about. Uh, you know, the, the usual, got the audition, mm -hmm. went to the audition, um, met the casting director, uh, they put it on tape. I don't know, it was, it was a kind of a long process. You know, film, so TV is very quick. Film can take a bit longer, and this one was a, was a drawn out process. Um, it was maybe a couple months later when I found out that the director, Marco Polo, wanted to meet with me. And so I met Marimar in the, in the casting room in, in what was called a chemistry read. And um, after that, a few weeks later, I found out I was going to Mexico City nice. for the first time. When I went, I got to play Jason Tate, who um, is engaged to Marimar Vega's character. And they seem to have this perfect life. They, you know, on paper, they tick all the boxes. They're both from very established, uh, well-off, well-known families. And it all seems to be going perfectly until Marimara finds out that her father, who's running for mayor of Mexico City, mm -hmm. has married her to her former lover so he can dump some money so he doesn't have to declare for the campaign. So my character, unknowing, not knowing what's going on, decides to follow her to Mexico because she's not coming back and not coming back. And then from there, um, it becomes this sort of love triangle. My character is a total fish out of water, getting to experience Me Mexico, the Mexican culture for the very first time. And, you know, he's dealing with all of, all of the things that can, that can um, arise from any kind of culture shock. I think it's really beautiful because my character gets to learn about the ways of another culture and in the end you know Marimar has a she, her character has a decision to make mm -hmm. and the decision that she makes isn't necessarily based on race or class or anything like that it's just it's a decision that she makes from her heart and from her gut and um, it, it doesn't really matter if people are happy with it or not but hopefully people are inspired by the story and inspired by the love and um, inspired to want to explore human nature and, and, and other cultures. Awesome. And uh, getting into this role, it has already been released in theaters and it had a great run. Uh, a lot of the people that have seen, seen it have told me that they really enjoyed it and really had a good time with it. So what did it take you to develop the, your, the character and make it really bring it out to life? Mm. Uh, we're going deep today, huh? I have a process that I do with every character, there are certain things that I always do. I always ask certain questions about where the character came from, who the character is, what makes the character tick. I mean, I, I, I try to answer every question I can think of answering. Based on that, then I make the choices for the character um, that seem to be um, apparent or most apparent to me based on what's in front of me on the script and of course that's that's an evolving process with Jason specifically uh, you know I, I did all of that but I also um, I'd never been to Mexico before uh, other than I think like Cabo once years ago um, but as I was told when I arrived in Mexico City oh, that doesn't count that's not real Mexico which I understand I understand that sentiment um, but I would say that I was experiencing a lot of things for the first time, just like my character was. I was experiencing certain smells, certain sounds, sounds especially, um, which is something that, that's in the movie because yeah, the, all, all the Mexicans that I met and talked to are very aware that Mexico City has a lot of sounds right. and a lot of sounds that are unique to Mexico and or Mexico City that, that are nowhere else in the world. I was going through similar things as Jason was. So, you know, sometimes we get lucky as actors or artists or entertainers. Uh, we get lucky and it's sort of like the muse taps us with the magic wand and goes, well, I'm going to put you through this experience that's similar to the experience that you're attempting to portray or tell the story of. So you have some, some better uh, information you have some experience to go on and I was fortunate to to have some of that to draw up on awesome. through the filming very cool so Ryan how is it crossing over to the Mexican film market 
from the United States film market. Is there how was that crossover and what was the transition in that? I'm not sure if it's a transition. Mm-hmm. Um, it just happened. I don't know. It it, it just uh, it just happened. Mm-hmm. I didn't. It wasn't something that was premeditated. When when I auditioned for Lobota, mm-hmm. I, I knew nothing about it other than it was shooting in Mexico. That's literally all I knew. And then when I got to Mexico to shoot it, then I found out that we had studio backing mm-hmm. and that it was going to be a theatrical release. I got, I didn't even know that when I got into it. And, you know, and, and at some point in that process, I found out who Marimar and Omar were. I hadn't heard of them previously. I just wasn't familiar with the, with the Mexican market. Uh, so then I was like, oh, well, that's pretty cool. You know, I'm working with a couple of really big stars in Mexico. And so it was just sort of like I kept on discovering this trail of breadcrumbs that was sort of leading to this, you know, what we're now talking about today, which is more than I could have imagined. And Bola was number one in Mexico. Yeah, yeah. And number 10 all time, I think, within a month of its release. So it's been great. I mean, it's been a really, really fun ride that, that was totally unexpected. Um, I've gotten to work with some incredible people in Mexican cinema. And um, I've gotten to do some really great things and see, see the world. And um, I'm really grateful. I got to go to the premiere of Overboard last week. And that was, it felt, it felt great to be there sort of in support of, it's not strictly Latin film or Latin cinema, but it's like crossover, you know? It, there's, there's, there's a lot of that movie that's in Spanish, just like ours. And I know that that's something that, that Pantaleon is working on doing. I know that that's something that, that uh, Latino and Latina actors are, are working on doing. They're, they're trying to bring their culture and content from south of the U.S. border into mainstream. And I think that they should. I think it's 100% deserving of being seen. Overboard's fantastic. And in Omar Chabado, speaking of Overboard, is, is in that movie as well. And so for me, it was, it was, it was special to, to be there. I was really grateful to have gotten the opportunity to be invited and be there and, 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 and participate with this sort of what feels like a new extended um, family for me. And, you know, I don't, I don't know how it all happened, but it did, and it's great. Oh, it was a great movie, so I, you could tell where the, all the bread comes come together because it was such a great film. How much uh, freedom did the director allow you to, to really build on the character and really add things to what was off on the script? Um, Marco Polo was, was really, really, um, I would say, collaborative and flexible. He, you know, for me, it, it, was, it was so much fun working with him because... He had, as the director, as the captain of the ship, he had a very clear vision in mind, which is really important. Beyond that, he gave us, as actors, a lot of flexibility. And then ultimately, you know, he's the director, so the buck stops with him. Mm -hmm. But there were times when, you know, when I brought something to him and he goes, yeah, let's try it. And sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. I think most directors, if not all directors, would say, "I I don't have all the answers. You know, I, I have the big picture, and there are certain there are certain requirements that I feel we need in order to tell this story truthfully. But beyond that, it's a sandbox, and we all get together and play. That's the point. Yeah, exactly. And 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 Marco Polo was was um, a consummate co-creator in that sense. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Ryan. Really appreciate you coming on to the show. Mm-hmm. And don't forget, Mi Vida de Valentina is out now, May 8th. Uh, So thank thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you for watching Muse. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it and subscribe to see all of our upcoming videos.